I would not be surprised. In fact, I'm kind of betting on the Big 12 joining the ACC, the Big 10, and the Pac-12 and going to a conference only or conference plus one schedule. It would not shock me because we are seeing these games dry up quickly. And with three of the Power Five, the Autonomous Five, saying, hey, we're going to basically just try to keep this within our office so that we can control the logistics and we don't have to wonder whether or not Georgia is going to get our conference players infected when they go to Virginia or vice versa, as Georgia is a hot spot for the coronavirus. We just got to go ahead and nix those, which means that games like South Carolina and Clemson probably don't happen, what Dabo Sweeney affectionately called the state championship. It also means that Georgia, Georgia Tech doesn't happen, which probably doesn't mean much to any of you and probably doesn't mean much to anybody except Georgia Tech fans, but they would still really like to see that game played because I'm sure they would like to be able to say, look, you get to play this game in your home state, along with many other games, right? We were all looking forward to, our, to North Carolina and Auburn. That game's gone, right? We already know that USC Alabama is gone. We know that USC Notre Dame is gone. We know that Notre Dame is going to have to play through an ACC schedule. We get to see what that looks like. And while we're already kind of picking them, it's not an easy win. Louisville is going to be good. Clemson is going to be Clemson. North Carolina could be North Carolina. But what this means for the Big 12 is probably three likely scenarios. All right. Now, of those three likely scenarios, we got 12 games, which is still on the table till Monday when Bob Bowlesby is expecting to put before the conference presidents as much information as he can so that they can make an informed decision. Nine Big 12 games plus one, being a non-conference game, right? Probably means that the game with Tennessee would get nixed for Oklahoma. Why? Because they already got this game scheduled with Missouri State that they asked for an NCAA waiver for. So they get this game in, right? And it's going to be held on August 29th. You don't get to back out of that one without really pulling the rug out from under Missouri State because while you might be able to do the force majeure thing, you made it precipitously har harder for you to pull that off by putting in motion the paperwork to try to get that game done, which means that you had every intention of trying to get that game done. And if you tried to pull it now, I could see the legal ramifications for a program like Missouri State who is already on its butt and is trying to do something like bring in just a little bit of money to keep their athletic program going. But the most likely option right now is the 12 game schedule even as it's hard man because if the SEC decides that it does not want to play 12 games in a season this year that's it Tennessee and Oklahoma is gone Ole Miss and Baylor is gone LSU Texas is gone Kansas State Vanderbilt is gone that might be the best opportunity that we have to play football this year, quite honestly, man. Because if you're taking a look at the numbers outside of football, you will see that Oklahoma is considered a red zone, high alert, by the government's coronavirus task force. And we have seen 14 deaths in the past week. We have seen a continuously high number of positive test cases. And we are considering to see our hospitals be overloaded with not just folks that are fighting the virus, but folks that got to go to hospitals for other things, you know, like pregnancies, broken legs, heart attack, all those things that we need to be focused on. And football being at the top of the list is really not it. However, we understand what football allows for, and it is a distraction. Such as it is, we were still very, very excited to get Major League Baseball played in some fashion even as they continue to botch this. And we're expecting the NBA to set the standard for which we want everybody to meet when they start games for real tonight, having not had a single positive test case, really, since they decided to do this thing in a bubble. And what we know is bubbles work. What we also know is you could probably put together a bubble for a college football program. And you could probably make that work. The problem that you run into is the hypocrisy and legalities that you are going to encounter in trying to do such a thing. Because if you decide that you want to be the University of Oklahoma and you want to go, say, fully online, as opposed to getting kids back on the campus, but you're going to leave football players on campus, you are showing everybody what is actually important. Because you've already decided other fall sports aren't going to play. You've also 
decided that other student athletes aren't as valuable. You are giving up the con. The thing that folks would fight me tooth and nail about. That, hey, RJ, they are student athletes. RJ, they are amateurs. They are not professionals. And yet, when it's time to put the money into spinning, you go, hey, Spencer Rattler, uh, can you uh, can you spin it? No, don't, don't worry about classes, you know, online this semester. Just, 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 just this semester. Don't worry about the other students either, you know, where you're supposed to get that full-bodied experience. No, 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 just, you know, go to the weight room, go to practice, go spin it for 11 games this year and help us keep this money going. And by the way, the education that you signed up to take is no longer the education that you're going to get because, you know, online classes. So why not just go to the University of Phoenix, play football? Because that's what we're doing right now. While we are having these discussions about the best way to play college football, the best way to play college sports, we are ignoring 70 years of the big wigs, of the suits telling us, no, they can't make any money because they're amateurs and we would not actually have a football schedule or football team if the kids can't go to class. Matter of fact, we had these dudes tell us on tape, hey, if we don't go to class, we are not going to play football. And how quickly they are backing down off of that because they know what a lie that was. They know what kind of hypocrisy they were courting. And yet, Texas A&M President Michael Young, who helped draft and plan the unification of East and West Germany following the Cold War with the State Department, has said that was easier to do then figuring out how to welcome 65,000 students and 3,500 faculty and thousands of staff to College Station this fall so they can have something like normal college. If that man can't get it done, and he thinks it's a bigger undertaking than putting together quite literally a country, what makes you think we're going to pull this off, man? What, ego? American fortitude? Nah, man. American fortitude is putting a mask over your face. American fortitude is following the science. American fortitude is discipline. We have shown we don't really have that much, man. Except when the money has to spin. So when this is over and this is done, and it will be over and done, when we got vaccines and some of us choose to take them and we still got folks that choose not to, when we get the money back to spend in the way that we're used to it spending, when we get to an Olympic Games, when we get to 2022 and we're like, wow, so glad it's not 2020 anymore. I will not let you forget. These dudes put your children in harm's way so that they could go make a buck. Knowing full well that these kids don't really have an opportunity to ask very good questions like, how are you taking care of me? How are you making sure that I get everything I'm supposed to get out of this experience known as college before football? 